Can Superman ever hope to return hope to the hopeless world that is War World? Well, let's hop into the pages of Action Comics number 1040 and find out together, shall we? So then, picking up more or less exactly from where the last issue left off, Clark, under the tutelage of his brand new Falasian mentor, has completely changed the way he does battle in the arena, and because of that, he's doing much better. Now, mind you, Superman is still staying very true to his no-kill creed, and because of that, he's actually earned himself a nickname amongst the wars Zoon population, they call him Unbahil Nagal, which is of course War Zoon for the Unbloodied Sword. Normally, it's a hell of an insult considering that this is a dog eat dog planet where if you're not killing, you're not really considered a person. But Superman wears this title as a badge of honor. And in its own way, the name is starting to catch on, and Superman is starting to build a following of people who are excited at his exploits, surviving time after time in the arena. Here's the problem though some of the very Falasians that Superman has come to save do not share this ideology. Quite the opposite. They've grown up on tales of Mongols' amazing exploits thanks to the Blood Priests. And because of that, even two young Falasian twins have adopted Mongols' twisted worldview, wherein kindness is a weakness that will only get you killed, and cruelty is actually the highest form of love because it hardens a person's heart. This means Superman most definitely has his work cut out for him, not only will he have to break the chains of all these people enslaved, but he'll also have to free them from the brainwashing that generations of living under Mongol has done to them. Though there is perhaps a light at the end of the tunnel as Mongol once again takes the field in the arena to berate Superman for all of his failures, while also trying to get the two twins to kill each other to show their loyalty. Here's the thing, though, they refuse to do it. Showing that the spark of humanity still lives inside of them, and that maybe Superman isn't just banging his head against a concrete wall over and over again for no reason. Speaking of, Clark gets royally beaten down by Mongol, but he ends up refusing to finish him off this time, so much to the point Chattel, Mongol's right hand, is starting to get suspicious. Chattel actually ends up showing a ton of genre savvy, reminding us why he's the brains on War World. He knows that the longer Superman lives, the more chances he has to inspire the population and turn them against Mongol. He's already starting to build a fan following, but all the same, Mongol refuses to end his life, saying that he has higher plans and aspirations for the United Planets, and that Superman needs to live for those plans to come to fruition, whatever they may be. Now, later that night in the slave pen, Superman actually has a chance to have a heart-to-heart -heart with the two twins. At first, their guards are up, not wanting to believe whatever Superman is selling to them. They truly believe themselves to be war zoons, but Superman actually gets them to warm up by telling him tales of their ancestors, the great Falasian scientists and adventurers who left Krypton in search of truth and justice, things that will always be their true birthright. So yeah, slowly but surely, Superman is breaking down the walls and getting these people on his side. Unfortunately, he's going to have to hurry up, though, because the Midnighter is already moving ahead with his next plan of action. Midnighter plans to destroy one of the large Red Sun generators in hopes that it will give Superman his powers back and give the good guys an edge on escaping. Here's the problem, though. To destroy a red sun generator would cause an untold amount of death on the planet. Again, it's hard for Superman to get all the residents of War World on his side and wanting to overthrow their leader if a bunch of them are dead. Superman's new mentor, though, thinks he may have another idea, a secret buried deep within the bowels of War World that may give them the edge they need without having to kill a bunch of people unnecessarily. Apparently, deep underground in War World, there exists the Necropolis, a massive graveyard built some unknown amount of time ago by some unknown conquest of Mongol and Warworld. Hats off to the art team, too, for an amazing splash wherein we see a bunch of large purple worms. According to the mentor, the gases these things expel actually create oxygen. It's while at the Necropolis, Superman ends up coming across Genesis Energy, the special name given to the properties left behind by the Source Wall. Superman had discovered some of these on Earth when the original War World ships fell. And now, everywhere he seems to look in War World, he finds some other new connection. Before Superman can fully and completely crack this riddle, though, he hears sounds back in the slave pens. Apparently, Mongols' troops didn't take too kindly to Superman's actions in the arena earlier that day, and because of it, they've come down to purge a bunch of the Falasians, starting with the twins. And so that was Action Comics number 1040, everybody, and once again, I am really enjoying this Philip Kennedy 
Johnson epic. There's something really powerful about Superman continuing to stick to his moral guns at a time when he is at his absolute weakest. It's one thing for Superman to be the moral authority, the guiding light of the DC universe when he's a nigh unkillable super god. But now that he's not and he knows that every action could very well not only kill himself but the very people he came to rescue, there's a lot of good drama to be wrung out of that material and I think we're getting it. I'm also much more invested than I ever thought I would be in the mysterious connections between War World and the Source Wall. This issue seeks to imply that if Superman is able to harness the power of Genesis energy, not only will he be able to get himself back to full strength, but maybe make himself stronger than he ever was before, which is quite a concept. And let's face it, also probably a pretty good way for Philip Kennedy Johnson to put the toys back in the box for the next writer when they come on. Overall, I'd give this one another very solid 8 out of 10. I'm having a lot of fun with the War World saga. Hey there everyone, Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Jewel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.